Hey everybody, welcome back to another Max Chat here with Anna Davis Court. Welcome Anna, good to have hey, you. Hey Kathleen, what's up? Hey chat, hey. how are yes. all of you doing? <laughs> chat, please let us know if you're watching, if you're hype. I certainly am. So for the next hour with Anna, we are going to be learning the basics of painting on a digital canvas in Adobe Fresco. So if you've ever wanted to dabble in digital painting, this is the right stream because Anna is one, an awesome illustrator. Oh, two, thank an, you. An, of course, an awesome <laughs> teacher. And I say you're probably a Fresco professional. At this oh point. my gosh, wow. Just like inundated <laughs> with compliments. Uh, by the way, Kathleen is also an amazing illustrator, stream queen, okay, and has the cutest dog in the land. So like, come on. That is true. That last one is definitely <laughs> true. I we just got a little Kashi, a uh, little piece of him. So like, mm -hmm. you know, if he wants to come on stream, I'm not against it. So you could replace me. <laughs> I'm into it. No, I want you here too. I want double. Cool. So for the last or for the next hour, you're going to be showing us a bunch of goodness in fresco. Um, but yes. first before that, do you want to kind of introduce like what kind of work you do and who you Absolutely. are? Absolutely. Hi, I'm Anna Davis Court. I'm a children's book illustrator. I regularly stream here on Behance uh, and it's just been a ball of fun here. If you guys didn't hear, by the way, Behance live streaming is open to everyone. So please join the fam. It's been awesome here. And other than that, I basically just, I mean, lately I've been doing Animal Crossing fan art because I'm into it. Uh, a lot of stuff that I do is very like joyful, cutesy, uh, handmade looking textural kind of work. And I'm just into that path. So that's where I'm going in the future. And oh, also patterns. I want to do surface design at some point. That would be really fun. <laughs> I agree. Yeah. So um, today, yeah, we're going to be going into fresco. I have some uh, tips on how to paint in a traditional style, basically. I am not by any means a master at like oil painting or watercolor painting, but I do have some tips for you guys and some names if you want to get into further exploration of traditional techniques. Um, but this one's just for fresco fans. And if you guys haven't tried fresco, by the way, it's awesome. I'll show you how awesome it is. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah, we'll pop over to your screen. And one thing I think a lot of people don't know is like when you're jumping into digital painting, a lot of the ideas are the same as traditional. Which is, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. There's a ton of overlap. And just by the way, I'm reminding everybody, this is Fresco. Woo. And I'm drawing <laughs> in it live. <laughs> wow. Woo. Uh, but yeah, I agree that so many of the things overlap. And actually, I did a few pieces that I'm going to show you guys time lapses of for this demo. Basically, I'm going to do time lapses and demo for you guys. And the time lapses taught me a lot about how to think about a digital canvas in a different way. Because like, say when you're laying down oils in person and you see a canvas and it's like, you're putting the brush to the canvas, your brain automatically connects a few things where it feels out when you are blending, it feels out when you are blobbing, you know, much more easily. <laughs> and so you kind of have to train yourself to do that with a digital canvas. Um, so if you're coming from a traditional background or you're coming from no background at all, it is just like giving yourself that time and leeway to have, first of all, tons of fun and then second of all patience with yourself to come up with you know you're feeling the canvas mm -hmm. um okay for people who don't know uh, I wanted to just show you of what fresco is first of all so uh, up here at the top we've got raster brushes if you can't see like my little like arrow thing over here uh -huh. raster brushes are at the top um that is anything that has pixels in it basically and this is a ton of kyle brushes so a lot of your favorites from photoshop if you're familiar with that then we've got live brushes this is what we're going to work in a lot today uh and that is watercolor and oil so far oh my gosh they're so like luxurious and i can't wait to show you but i will show you those later um Hey, do you love the live brushes as much I as I do? I do. They literally make me <laughs> sigh. I love them. <laughs> Uh, and then below that, we've got our vector brushes. These are uh, these are brushes that never degrade, no matter how much you zoom in or out. They have mathematically determined where on the canvas they line up <laughs> and all that jazz. So a lot of Illustrator folks will be familiar with that. Eraser, which can be literally any brush as well. Um, we've got the smudge tool, which is new and very mm -hmm. exciting. Uh, we've got the... Oops, 
the uh i did the shape tool there we go i've got the move tool <laughs> the move tool brings you into a menu where you can transform rotate all that jazz so that's what we were just in um and then we've got i did it again uh the <laughs> lasso tool which can be straight edge or uh organically lassoed we've got the fill bucket we've got the color oh wait this is a shape picker basically like it gives you a foundational shape select or mask or transform or anything. It's awesome. Uh, then we've got the text tool, whoop, whoop, text in fresco, whoop, whoop. Uh, and then we've got the color picker. Uh, we can import images from our camera, file, creative cloud. And then we've got all of our stuff for our, uh, our brushes. Basically all of our brush info is down there at the bottom left. So we've got colors, we've got size, we've got uh, opacity flow, uh, all the information that you could possibly need with brushes basically. Now, on the right side, we've got all of our canvas information over here. So we've got layers, layers upon layers, donkey. And then we've got <laughs> <laughs> at the top is this is just like pulls out our layers or puts them away. Uh, then we have all of our layer properties. So we can turn it into a blend mode, change the opacity, all that jazz. Uh, and then we've got the comment section, which is a brand new thing as well. So you can basically like uh, leave comments and uh, like, work together with the team. <laughs> so I haven't used that feature yet. Very excited to do so with collaborations and such. Um, so that is really basic overview of Fresco. You can save out time lapses. You can go live. You can save out any form of image, JPEG, PNG, whatever you, you want, whatever you need. Um, so now that we've got that out of the way, I wanted to show you a little bit of what I've done so far. I see Ryan Selby in the chat. Hey, Ryan, what's up? I saw your stream earlier today. <laughs> it was awesome. So good. Uh, and it was all about streaming on Behance. Do it. Do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, by the way, if you guys wanted to stream from Behance, we have a live streaming uh, feature right here. So this is basically where you export everything in the top right. And then you can, hey, look at that. Send to Illustrator, share a link uh, for comments and download, and then live stream at the bottom. And anyone can do that now. So if this is the first you're hearing of it, look into it. It's awesome. So. Uh, I want to show you guys some time lapses of bigger pieces that I made because we only have an hour today. So what I wanted to do was show you a little bit of the full scope of what you can use these brushes for. And then we're going to go into a demo of exactly how I painted those pieces step by step, but just on a smaller piece so that we can actually do it. <laughs> so y'all ready for this? Do, 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 do. Is this the background music? I love yeah, it. Yeah, obviously. Keep I'll it going. going. <laughs> so this is, um, I did a diptych of two pieces. So this is one piece with the watercolor brushes. So you're going to see a lot of stuff go on really quickly here. And what we're going to do is just um, basically do this on a smaller scale so that you can see what I was doing. I actually also did these pieces mostly on stream. So if you guys want to check out my Behance streams, these are in the archives. Uh, and they are watercolor and oil. So this one is the watercolor one with our little birdie boy sitting on a mushroom. Um, I did a, <laughs> do you like that? <laughs> so cute. Can't get cuter. I mean, <laughs> what are you doing if you're not making cute art? It's just the best way I to agree. live. I <laughs> agree. Uh, and I did watercolor brushes for basically the entire background of this and you'll see how beautifully they bleed together and create these gorgeous gradients and textures and just flow and then on top of it if you want to get more of a sharp edge there are multiple ways you can go about it you can make a new layer with watercolor brushes and it gives you a crisp edge on the edge of the brushes that you're using or you can use other brushes on top of it say like the raster brushes i personally am a huge fan of just the pencil brush in fresco it's your first brush you see it's amazing i absolutely mm -hmm. love it and so i use that a lot of times to just kind of zero in on shapes and things like that You'll see a lot of flickering in this because I uh, I love to turn layers on and off. <laughs> it's horrible for time lapses, but really great for me. Uh, and it is basically my way of um, checking things. So you'll see like black and white turn on. You'll see, uh, you know, turning on the sketch, turning off the sketch, things like that. Uh, and a lot of this it becomes very small detail because I love working rough to refined. So it's a blobby piece at first and then it gets mm -hmm. really like zoop exact at the end. So you can barely see like what actually is changing here. <laughs> yeah, a lot but, of details going into those mushrooms. You know, mushrooms are really fun to paint. If you haven't painted mushrooms in a while, I highly suggest. They're so fun. <laughs> I bet. And like if you're ever in a creative red or something, what I love is doing a, um, 
like a page of botanical something where it's just like look up reference of plants and just paint them it either however like you know you want you can do them as realistically or unrealistically as you want now uh this is where is it oh yeah these are the final this is the final piece for this one um and then we've got our secondary piece which is the oil with the frogs uh let's see here where's the oil piece time lapse there we go so the oil piece time lapse is all in one um this is one thing that i wanted to uh show you guys today as a big tip for painting in a traditional style one thing that i learned from not only art school but just like learning from other artists there's a great artist online called uh james gurney if you guys don't follow him on youtube do it. He is a wealth of information of color and light and how to paint with oils. But I mean, a lot of it can just go straight into the digital world as well. And uh, Kathleen, do you know James Gurney? Is he the guy that did dinosaurs? Yeah, he did Dinotopia. Dinotopia, yes. oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he did, uh, there's a book called Gurney Journey which is his color and light painting book. Of course he went there. He's also really entertaining. So look him up. Um, but he is one of those people that also does this trick of um, when you start with an oil canvas, a lot of times you want to wash it with a color. And the color usually if you start with a warm color or a cool color, it can really play off of what you intend for the piece. So I intended this piece to be a warm piece. So I wanted to start with a cool wash underneath. And actually, I use the watercolor brushes for the wash because I felt that why not, first of all, do a really quick way to fill the canvas because watercolor is super easy to just bam, 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 and then uh, have the oil over top on different layers and it, it acts as if it's dried. Uh, and it's, it's something that I'll show you more in our demo as well, but uh, it was one of those huge things that changed painting in my mind a little bit because now I pay much more attention to the contrast between cool and warm colors and what they can do for your overall piece, even when they're used in very small ways. And also, thank you, Sam, for posting the uh, James Gurney link in the chat. <laughs> yes, thank you, mods. Appreciate it. Always love our mods. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, on this one, I'll also, I did a little bit of pencil work on top just to give the little bits of detail. Uh, and also a new feature, by the way, of Fresco that I just heard about is the time lapses are now available in 4K. Whoop, yes. Whoop, love it. <laughs> that I was an issue. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I didn't, uh, I don't think I recorded these in 4K and I think they look pretty good, but I am so excited for that because it's actually something that I offer as like a Patreon reward as you get time lapses of my work. And then also for social media and things like that, like people want to see process a lot of time. So if you're ever thinking about what can I offer people, you know, what, what can get them engaged in my work and all that jazz time lapses, they're awesome. <laughs> yeah, and they're built in. If you already made the work, then you got a time lapse. Exactly. So I'm going to hop back to Fresco uh, and we can start painting now because I'm, oh, I can't wait to paint. Okay. For the <laughs> last few days, I've been looking at these pumpkins and I've just been wanting to paint them. So uh, I drew these pumpkins and I'm basically just going to go through the process that I did for those two big paintings and just show you what that was like. Okay. Awesome. Sound good? While you get started, chat, I want to know, are you the one on the left or are you the one on the right? <laughs> and name them. Yeah, <laughs> I let's love get it. some names in the chat. I, I'm feeling more like the one on the right today. Gonna just say that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, why? <laughs> I'm very curious now. I have a big head and that one does too. <laughs> Metaphorically <laughs> or like literally? <laughs> Unfortunately, literally. No, I think you're oh, yeah. the perfect size. Oh, it's perfect, but perfect. it is big. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I'm gonna do the one, uh, right one watercolor, just, you know, cause I feel like it. Uh, oh. So first what I'm gonna do is just lay in some oranges. And what I want to do is play with the watercolor function. So if you can see, look at that bleed. For anyone who hasn't seen Fresco before, I'm sure your mind is being blown. I love it so much. Yeah, I know. I've seen Fresco a million times and I'm still like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it always does something different and it's pretty magical. Absolutely. And it's fun to play with dramatically different colors. Like down here, we can just add like a super vibrant red, like a uh, pinky red kind of. Mm -hmm. 
and it blends into the orange. So it creates more of a red down here, but it's not exactly the same color on your brush. It's just like it would be on a watercolor paper. If you had a bunch of wet wa watercolors and they're actively mixing, it changes everything. It just actively creates its own life, which is really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, and somebody in the chat is saying that they had pumpkin pie earlier and now they feel guilty because of pumpkin no! pie. No! <laughs> <laughs> I think that you can feel fine about it. Don't worry. These guys are super understanding. Uh, <laughs> very um, pro pumpkin pie because I think that means that they're, they might be like a purveyor of pumpkins as well. And then they sell more if you buy more. I don't know. It's a okay. Thing. The personification gets real iffy after a while because you're yeah. like, wait. <laughs> wait a second. <laughs> How do that work? Uh <laughs> I'm messing with the size and everything down here. So if I'm working a little too fast, just definitely ask me questions chat because I want you guys to get all the information you could possibly get out of this. Uh, but I am so used to working in Fresco now that a lot of it's like second nature and Ooh. it's so fun. So yeah. I like to hop forward. <laughs> cool, Daryl has a question about the yeah. um, multicolor color picker. Multicolor color picker. I have not used it yet. Have you, Kathleen? I have. So it's just activated by using the color picker in general, but you just uh, drop it over two colors. Yeah, there you go. <gasps> Easy peasy. It's, yeah, and it works for fresh or it works for watercolor brushes and oil Sweet. brushes. So I, I didn't, let's try it out. So the multicolor color picker is a newer thing. Uh, when did that roll out? I can't remember. It was pretty recently, I think. Well, it's officially yesterday. But officially yesterday, really? <laughs> Before oh my then gosh. as well. But I so know you can... Sure that is live now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody can use it. So uh, in the color picker down here in the bottom left, you can see it's just got that like upper area of the... What do you call this? The... The... the, the oh my gosh. Stem? Stem! There we go. Words <laughs> evade my brain. And now when I... Uh, when I show you the whole brush, it's got that like bit of red at one side and bit of brown mm -hmm. at the other side. So it's got those multiple colors. We can definitely do that to more advantage in the future if we have two colors right next to each other or a multitude of colors right next to each other. Yeah. It's just so fun. That's awesome. Also, you can see how this bleeds out into the pumpkin. I love, love, love that like random happy accidents kind of feeling that it gives where it's just like, you know, Whatever happens, happens. And if I want to change it, I can change it. So it's it's the craziness of actual watercolors meets the control of digital, which is like yeah. madness. And I love it. Yeah, love you can so always much. undo if you don't like the happy accident. Sometimes an accident is just an accident and that's okay. <laughs> Not so happy. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Dre in the chat is wondering about if Fresco has an equivalent to Alpha Lock. And I think alpha yes. lock is like uh, locking the transparency. Pixel locking. Yeah. Yes. So, so yes. Yes. Uh, let's mm -hmm. do a, a little lock on this. So you can lock transparency. All you have to do is click on the layer and it gives you all these options. So we've got um, lock transparency down here. So now you'll see a little icon on the layer where it's got a lock and pixel like board or whatever you call it. And now if I take, uh, let's do a crazy color like this pink or something and go in here, it doesn't go outside. Like I am going like this on the canvas all across it and it's not going outside of the pixels that we already have. Oh, look at that. We could give them all blush. <gasps> cute. Bless you. Very cute. <laughs> oh, and then it blends out. You don't even have to like work it or smudge it or anything. It just <laughs> love it. We should have yeah. seen real life. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to unpixel lock it now because I want to paint more on the canvas. So all you have to do is unlock transparency. Easy peasy. Also, one thing that like just as painting advice I love is especially with leaves or something that you consider like, oh, this would be one color. Add some color variation. If you ever look at a leaf in real life, it's got so many different possibilities of what it could look like. And especially in fall, you know, we got the colors change in leaves, but then there can also be like edges that have gotten burnt or eaten or something, you know? And I just think it brings so much life, even in a very stylized approach, you can have a lot of um, realistic elements that make things more beautiful. Yeah, and I think you'll notice when you start building in that like modeling of the color, it'll start looking more realistic. And it's kind of hard to understand why, but it really is because life has layers. 
absolutely it's, layers donkey it's back again layers uh, somebody <laughs> in the chat was wondering do you like to use different layers so i see you have quite a few absolutely uh so these layers were literally me playing with the program and deciding what i wanted to show you guys the most today also we can group these uh because i don't want to turn off all three of the the layers that i have for these pumpkins what we can do is just drag one over the other and boom they're in a layer or a group together so now all I have to do is double tap, boom, I'm in the group. Oh, so easy, I love it. Um, but I can turn that off and show you guys the other layers that I have here. This is the oil, all the oil brushes that I used um, just to test them out and see what kind of get like different textures they give. And uh, there are different watercolor brushes as well. Uh, I use the watercolor brushes a lot in my regular work. So I wanted to test the oils a little bit more. This is more oil testing to see how the different colors and things blend. Um, but yeah, that I use so many layers, you guys. <laughs> if you look at any of my files, it's usually like 10 files in one because I just, instead of creating a new file, I usually just create new layers and start drawing whatever the heck I, I've thought of in the moment. Uh, I'm just like that. Interesting. I feel like I've never done that. I'm really much like a one file, one idea kind of gal. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, good for you because I lose <laughs> things that way so often. Oh, <laughs> Looking you. through like, okay, all the different files that I thought I was, you know, being so organized with. And then like, yeah, I just go back and I'm like, wait, this one has, okay, I, that one, I have to pull it out. I have to make a new like file and actually save it out. I haven't done that as much lately, but I think when the thought strikes, you just kind of have to roll with it. And yeah. that's how my brain works. So welcome to my life. <laughs> it is your stream. Welcome to your stream. <laughs> I'm driving guys. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Uh, by the way, I am making a new layer because I wanted crisper edges for something. And it's going to be this inside portion of the pumpkin. I just wanted to like exit that out. And I thought I thought it would be fun for you guys to decide if you want the pumpkins to have glowing orifices or if they could be dark. What do you think? <laughs> Kathleen's face. That's just not <laughs> the word I thought you were going to say. Holes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Glowing, not glowing. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I know what Kathleen. I think. No, I'm nothing to be sorry about. It's all about <laughs> happy accidents here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in the meantime, while we're deciding that, I'm just going to make a new layer for our oil guy because this seriously, we can motor on these because it's so fun. Like it's literally like we were talking about before stream. It's kind of like bringing back the fun of finger painting. It just gives you this play area. It's so much less formal feeling mm -hmm. than a lot of other programs that I've used. And that I mean that in the best way where it's just like fun again. I don't know. It brings out a, a side of myself that I feel like nothing would have brought this out except for having these brushes in the program and all that jazz. And I'm not just saying that because of Adobe. Like I genuinely feel that way. <laughs> I'm so glad. So the chat is saying a lot of glow to happen. A lot of glow. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. And Love while it. you're doing that, Carissa wants to know, is there a quick way to change the brush size? Absolutely. Down here. On the bottom left, if you see this, this is a scrolly thing. <laughs> you can either tap it and then uh, use the little scrolly dealio, you know, doodads. A scrubber. <laughs> scrubber, good job. <laughs> uh, or as I do, you basically just, when you see that number, you can like put your, um, oh, you can actually like long tap it and it gives you a number pad, how fancy. Um, you learn a new thing every day. So what I do is I just uh, basically scroll on top of the number and it instantly like lets you just go up or down. I love that feature. Thank you, UI people. <laughs> um, and then another thing I was gonna say, oh, is like my favorite feature. Oh my gosh, you guys. So um, it's less with the live brushes. Let me show you with raster brushes. Uh, I have my favorites here and top of the list or, you know, would be top of the list is the pencil brush. I absolutely love it just for a little dalliance. I want to show you that. So this is my pencil perpendicular to the screen. It's nice and sharp. And then when I put it like more parallel to the screen like this, you get that lovely graphite effect. Oh, it's the so, best. It is so simply good. the best. I use it all the time. And it's literally like, it can look like so many different things. It's just so changeable. So yeah. changeable. Um, and what was I going to say? Oh, uh, the, what do you call this technically, Kathleen? Do you have a name for it? The little that, circle at the bottom? The touch shortcut. 
pet shortcut. It is my favorite thing in Fresco. This is what I look for in every other program I use. <laughs> if I ever am in Photoshop, I'm like, I need. So um, <laughs> basically whatever brush you're on, it becomes an eraser of exactly that brush. Now I learned in Photoshop, there is a key for that. It's the tilde key, the little squiggle underneath the escape key. And I have used it so much more since I learned that, but this has it built in. And if you uh, double tap it, it becomes a permanent eraser. So you don't have to hold it down with your thumb and you tap it again and it becomes uh, the pencil. So you could literally just switch back and forth and just like tap it instead of holding it down. I find myself holding it down a lot just cause I like having it like right there. My thumb's doing something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, there are so many things about Fresco that I love, but that is one of the biggest and you can move it anywhere. So it's, it's left or right hand friendly as mm -hmm. is the entire program. You can move stuff around. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, another handy thing, Christoph is wondering, is there a way to draw a straight line or a perfect circle? So yes, there are shapes and yes, there is a way to draw a straight line. There's a couple ways. Yeah. I use the ruler when I need one. So the ruler is at the bottom right hand part of the screen. So you can pop that up. Kathleen, is there a different way that you know of? So I, I think this is live. Let's try it. If you long, <laughs> I'm gonna break it. <laughs> if you long press on the canvas and then drag out a line, but don't release your pen. Oh, so, okay. Wait. Wait. So, am I just, just drawing really straight? Just <laughs> maybe. So draw a line and then don't release your pen at yeah. all. And it doesn't then look like it yet, but maybe okay. If I'm it's doing coming it, then. <laughs> It's yeah, coming. like the snap feature. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then it will be here soon, people, yes. soon. Also, I'm going to just lasso out the uh, thing. So by the way, if you are uh, unfamiliar with lasso or lasso, I don't know how you say it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> basically with this, you can uh, erase, mask, deselect, transform. It gives you all the options at the bottom. So if you don't know how to do that, now you do. And then it also can be additive or subtractive. Uh, I all the time don't close my lasso. So I just do close lasso at the bottom, erase, then deselect and you have nothing selected. Bada bing, bada boom. There you go. Oh yeah. So um, I actually am thinking I may want to make this pumpkin a little bit different than the other one. Maybe like a white pumpkin. Oh, You've cute. seen those, right? Yeah, love that. It might have a little bit of orange but I'm gonna erase some of this out. With the size. I love that too. <laughs> it's all fun. It's all good. Yeah. All right. And so apparently that snap to straight line feature, it's a setting. You just have to turn it on in your preferences. So. Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. And there's constant, like, honestly, I love when things aren't quite live yet because it means that um, it's coming and that shows off the feature of a lot of what the CC brings to the entire family of programs is just, it's always updating. There's new stuff coming all the time. It's not that you have to like buy it again or anything like that. You just get it. And that kind of stuff, you never know what the feature is going to be. That's like life-changing for you. Because <laughs> yes. guys, we use these programs every day. Do you know how important they are? <laughs> so important. The lifeblood. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and on that on that note of the fact that this is always being updated, it's also being developed by the community. So the team that builds Fresco is like very um, they are reliant on creatives to tell them what tools they want. They want it to be fun. They want it to feel like finger painting. So it does. Yeah, <laughs> it does. They so that's did. where a lot of the magic comes from is just building the app together. Absolutely. And give feedback. We always want that. I say totally. we, like I'm on the team, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a creative, you're part of the team. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Kathleen, get it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm painting in here really sloppily with oil. And the fun part of oil is you get to keep mushing it around on your layer. So you get to like, oh, I don't quite like the marks that I'm making right here. All I have to do is remark it basically. And it has that same feel of happy accidents that you can find uh, and so much texture, you guys, look at that. There's like canvas. If I sh turn off the uh, the sketch mm -hmm. here, you can see all that juicy globby, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> I totally do. And the fact that you're zooming in so far makes me think that you have a pretty high like DPI or PPI. I have no idea. This. So uh, someone in chat was asking what you had no. this set as. 
This is a 12 by eight and I always do 300 PPI because mm -hmm. that's usually the standard for, um, for most art, <laughs> I feel like. Some things are very spe specific and you have to do like 600 or whatever, but mm -hmm. um, I would never go below 300 personally unless I had to. And especially when you're creating something, you can always downsize it at the end. But like when you're making it, I would always suggest bigger is better. Yep. Totally. It's almost impossible to make more pixels. <laughs> yep. That's why I, I would always suggest also like invest in your computer, invest in your hardware as well, just to make sure that you can handle everything at a comfortable speed. Like you don't have to have the best of the best, but something that can make it so that you're not, you know, waiting for every save. It's just, it's the rest of your life, guys. <laughs> it's worth investing in. And I know that uh, it's easy enough said, but I would just suggest if you can s save for anything, make it hardware as well. Cool, that's great, great advice. Yeah, and oh, somebody was asking actually earlier in the chat whether they should get an iPad or an iPad Pro. Um, I don't know, <laughs> sorry, I, I'm not good for advice on that particular one, but I was just thinking like, if you're investing in your hardware, like I was saying, I would go for the most recent that you can afford because of just uh, like them becoming obsolete over time and all that jazz. So I want you to get the most bang for your buck. And usually that is getting just the most recent you possibly can. Right. And then your, your programs will run really smoothly on it. Right. And I'm always an advocate for trying to get things secondhand. So, you know, there's people who splurge on an iPad and then they want to sell it on Craigslist and just go get the new one there. I literally got mine off Craigslist. <laughs> it's the uh, 11 inch iPad Pro, I think. 11 mm -hmm. something. Yeah. There you go. Works like a charm. Absolutely. Oh, it's been a lifesaver. And man, my husband and I were talking so much about like, is this worth it? Is it worth it? Every single day it's been so worth it. <laughs> and honestly, he uses it so much <laughs> that I'm like, yes, this is good. And you're like, I'm going to need that back to do my job. <laughs> Sometimes. No, he's very generous with it. It's only when, you know, like I feel like it's so much more worth it when two people can get something out of it instead of just one. So I'm happy that he uses it. There you go. That's awesome. And he loves Fresco. So it's just like one of these little family things. Like, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're a Fresco family. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Excuse me. We're a Fresco family. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> yeah. Get out of this house. Now. <laughs> <laughs> so the oils are over here. As you can see, the total difference between the, the like close up look of these watercolor to oil Ooh. Mm. now let's well after this leaf i'm going to add the glow guys we're yes, gonna go asking glow. for it <laughs> like where's the glow she promised us glow <laughs> uh if you guys weren't here for my light box talk that was all about glow so that was a really fun one too and it was also in fresco <laughs> oh wow that's awesome I'm all over it <laughs> cool so that was also a digital conference Absolutely. Yes. Second yeah. digital conference of the year here. And I think it's going great. I've been seeing a lot of awesome stuff and like great feedback. I have a, a discord with my Behance streaming where we all hang out and chat about stuff. And we've been talking about the sessions that people are finding and, you know, what you love and all that stuff. And it's just, it's been great to talk with people about what they learn and also like, oh, I, I got this from this, this from this. And then you can watch the replays and all that jazz. So there's a lot of fun stuff, yeah, uh, good stuff that comes from like a digital conference, I would say. Right. I'm glad that people are finding value in it. Absolutely. I can't believe it's free. I still am like, wow, <laughs> go Max. It's pretty so, cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool this year. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to add a new layer and start pumping in some really light yellows for the glue. Oh, cool. Okay. So you're filling in the eye hole. Just the a flat yellow. <laughs> the eye hole, very specifically. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. And that was with the oil brushes. Now I'm going to flip over to, uh, what you call it, a color. Um, and honestly, I'm just picking whatever brush I find interesting at the moment. But if it's not working for me, I can so easily just like get another brush. So it's really up to you. And then uh, we're going to fill in these eye holes. And uh, this is watercolor and oil on the same layer. So the glow for each of them is on its uh, on one layer. So it doesn't matter, 
you know, what you're using really. Uh, it's just as long as it's a non vector layer, it's all together. Cool. When you use vector brushes, by the way, it makes its own new layer. So it's, it's really easy to keep them separate. Yeah, I think that's really helpful. And if you ever want to bring those vectors into Illustrator, you can. They're totally editable. 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 <laughs> and edible. Ooh. <laughs> that's a new feature I didn't know about. <laughs> Tasty. Uh, <laughs> love it. So um, I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to use the watercolor Wash Soft. And I'm going to make it a blend mode. This one, I think I'll go for soft light because that's always tried and true glow method. Um, but we can go through all the different blend modes and see what is best for what we're doing. So I'm just going to go really loosely over these areas and just like wah, 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 wah. Wow. make it glow. See, right now it's got kind of a definitive edge, but I'm going to blend that out. And we can do it on the oil as well. We can do it either like with oil brushes or watercolor. What I love about watercolor is it's blending. So what I wanted to do is just combine that like over both of them. Great. And now I'm going to make it bigger and I'm going to take a lot of the flow down and I'm going to put the water up. So these are the individual like settings that you can really control in the brush. And I know because I played around with it what they kind of do. I'm going to lower the water a little bit. But you can basically have almost an invisible brush blending out these edges. Yeah, just so. imagine a brush filled with water painting exactly. on the edge. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and so I'm just going around the edges of these and having them just like into the paper. You know, Very gotta nice. have sound effects when you're painting. I love it. I like that about you, Anna. Get those sound effects. <laughs> <laughs> you know, can't help it. Just the way we are. There you go. And uh, Tate was wondering in the chat, did you use reference when drawing these pumpkins? Actually, no, but I've drawn so many pumpkins now that like it's it's in my visual library very solidly. But I would highly recommend if you are like unsure about anything or just you want to make something look better, always use reference. I think it will no doubt just always level up your artwork to do reference. So these guys could have been 10 times better. I'm sorry. Like, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just one of those things that like sometimes you're doodling for fun and sometimes you want it to be like uh your your piece you want to show it or you want it like you have an intention for it and honestly sometimes I feel like those pieces that are just for you are your best pieces but it's really um dependent on what you feel for the what is needed basically and especially if you've never done it before um, mm -hmm. I also like sculpted uh, little pumpkins and stuff out of like Sculpey and things like that. If you've never done that for like a subject of some sort, do it. Like sculpting something in 3D, it solidifies so much in your brain and will tell you so much about just how to draw it. So another little tidbit. Yeah, that's a great point. And drawing from life, if you can't make it out of 3D, Absolutely. then it's like the kind of the next best thing. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to go through and just check out some of these blend modes to see if there's something that really works for us. And maybe it'll work on one of them and not the other because we made the uh, left one a white pumpkin. It is very light already, which makes less contrast between the glow and the uh, pumpkin flesh. <laughs> so uh, what we can do is either darken the pumpkin or we can just, you know, deal. Uh, it's up to us what we want and what, what we think looks right, basically. So for me, I want to play with uh, putting a multiply layer over the pumpkin. And, you know, we're just going rogue because why not? Very nice for some sort of shadow. Uh, possibly, yeah. Oh, we should do some drop shadows underneath them. But what I wanted to do is just darken slightly the front mm -hmm. of the pumpkin so that we get a little bit of a contrast between the glow and the, the skin of the pumpkin. Gotcha. might be too much just because it's like making it a little bit brown so i'm gonna lower the opacity a little bit of that layer uh another way of using watercolor with oil but i also want to show you a really cool thing that happens when you use watercolor and oil on the same layer so we've got our oil pumpkin over here and we've got this really cool watercolor brush that i haven't shown you guys yet it's called the watercolor wet sp spatter <laughs> say that 10 times fast um so what i want to do is just make a little bit of spatter here on the edge oh with the oh. oil and it bleeds into it oh that's that's so, so cool, cool. Great and it makes texture. it feel right it just makes it feel like oh maybe i actually did this on a piece of paper and there was a little 
little splatter that happens. You can also do it with the watercolor. Look at that bleed. What happens there? Oh, so nice. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of pew, 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 pew. It adds so much life and fun to it. Let's do what Kathleen was saying and do a little bit of shadow. Were you thinking drop shadow or were you thinking like shadow on the pumpkin? I was thinking shadow on the pumpkin, but what I think, honestly, doesn't yes. matter. <laughs> <laughs> it does. It really does. No, I think that we can do all of the above. So there is no wrong, no right, no reason, no rhyme. <laughs> Agreed. All right, I'm just going to throw a little drop shadow under here so that they feel like they're on a solid surface. Um, we can, ooh, actually, I want that to be green. I feel like they should have grass underneath them. Oh, so I'm going nice. to do, uh, I want to do uh, the pixel locking that we were doing before. Lock transparency, that's what it's called. And then I'm just going to paint in with watercolor and just make sure that I have some nice variation in there. Ooh, different greens. Boom. Nice. And now we've got a little bit of green and we can add more to make it grassy. Uh, and then let's see if we turn off the sketches. Let's just look at what we've got here. Ooh, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it's not now time when we can. Whoops, I clipped it. There we go. Oh, also we have layer clipping in Fresco. Woohoo! Thank goodness. <laughs> Seriously. Uh, if you guys don't know what layer clipping is, it does essentially kind of the same job as um, lock transparency, but it offers you a lot more leeway to like keep information. It's basically non-destructive. So uh, if you make a layer, say, let's do beep, uh, this green, and I'm like, ooh, this green is so nice. I want to keep all that information, but I'm going to only put it on where the watercolor of the pumpkin is. All I have to do is on that layer, go to this little square with the arrow pointing down, and boom, it clips to that. So we still got all the information on that green layer, but it's clipped to the pumpkin pixels. The pumpkin yeah. pixels. <laughs> the pumpkin <laughs> like pixels. Exactly. All right, uh, let's go in with one of my, uh, the favorite brush that I've talked about already, but um, using it in conjunction with the other two, the pencil brush. What I love to do, first of all, uh, we can color the lines that we already have. So we've got uh, our pumpkin sketch on top that I already did. And that is going to be locked with transparency. And I'm just going to go in there with like a nice hot red, I think. Oh, yeah, spice it up. And then just give it a little bit of pizzazz, you know, a little color, color wow. for your mother. And is that sketch layer a different blend mode or is it just normal? Just normal. Yeah, that cool. one. Uh, but we can totally turn it to blend mode so we can go through and make it whatever we like and see how it changes things. I actually like it on multiply because then on the stem mm -hmm. you get that darker quality. So let's do that. And then we've got a separate one for the other pumpkin. Uh, let's do lock transparency again and see if the red works on this guy as well. And I drew them with kind of like a brown color. Uh, I love coloring my lines so, so, so much. So I usually don't sketch with black, but in case you do, this can bring so much life to your th like work in general. It can feel unfinished when you turn off the sketch, but sometimes if you just make the sketch part of it, it feels like instantly so much more finished and then all you have to do is figure out what don't you like you know you just scrape your eyes over the piece like from top to bottom and just say is this working is this working is this working and if something bugs you just fix it boom <laughs> it's that easy just, just fix, fix it. it it's done it was fine don't <laughs> worry about it <laughs> uh, but it's a good point that like even a professional illustrator sees things that they don't like and they fix it constantly and, right and that's why their final work is really nice um, but somebody in the chat, I think it was Daryl, was saying that he heard good advice during a conversation yesterday. Don't compare Ooh. yourself to what you see out there today, but compare yourself to what you did six months ago. Absolutely. I love that so much. There's like <laughs> so much talk about um, psychology when there's like a creativity conference. And I absolutely love that because we all need help. <laughs> like, I feel like everybody is at some point or, you know, constantly we're all just at some level of doubting ourselves or feeling bad or whatever so i absolutely agree compare yourself only to yourself and always celebrate your wins obviously and then there is no loss there is no failure it's just looking for what can you learn from it 
And uh, absolutely, especially with social media, uh, remember that your pieces have value, have uh, a place in the world. Is that Kashi? Yes. <laughs> yes, I love uh, Cameo. Um, but also, uh, what was I going to say? Distracted by the dog. Oh, obviously. <laughs> I mean, how could I not be? Uh, <laughs> the Oh my gosh, is he making it up here? Ah, One time in. Oh, he's so good. <laughs> I love him. Okay, off you go. Oh no, he's so good. Uh, sorry. Okay. Uh, what I was going to say was, um, oh, if you ever find yourself like, I really like a piece that I made, but it wasn't executed all that well, go back and revisit old pieces because nothing will show you how much you've grown unless you like show yourself literally like this is the old, this is the new. I like the new, you know, just try to find that way of uh, congratulating yourself and showing yourself a really solid progression in your work. Yeah, I think creativity and like creative skill is really interesting because literally every creative person is always getting better. Like it's a skill that always. you get better at your entire life. So like you said earlier, we all need help. We're all getting better. We're all learning. Absolutely. It's and never beautiful. Think, like, it is. I know it's, it's good psychology work for like anyone in life, but I think we have to always be really specially aware of it as artists because we're so um, like self-absorbed in a way, but like literally our minds are on our canvas and that's what we sell. <laughs> like it's all about what's in your brain and how you uh, deal with it <laughs> or like make the best of it. So it is super important to make sure that you're not getting into an unhealthy viewpoint or uh, somehow like holding yourself back. Like so many other jobs don't make you question yourself like art does. And so you just have to be aware of it. I think that's half the battle. Yeah. And having a creative community is so important. It's so important. Right. So I'm so glad to see all these people in chat. Some people are saying this chat is the best part about Max. And I totally oh, agree. Right? Yeah, so much. Oh, you guys are the best. And also I see my best friend, Anthony Sims is in the chat as well. Hi, Anthony. And uh, <laughs> I absolutely love that. Like we have all become part of this community again, but Behance live streaming has been such a wonderful surprise to me where I was like, I'll try out this thing. We'll see what it's like. And literally like, I, I don't know what I would be doing right now without it because it created such a sense of community so quickly at a time when you know everything was cut off basically that was at the start of a lot of the quarantine stuff was um right when i got into streaming and it's just day and night how how my mental health could have gone to how it has gone <laughs> it's crazy uh and i i definitely thank all of you guys who are part of the stream team uh for just creating such a great community. And that goes for all of Behance. I think it's just a really positive place. Yeah, wholesome to the max, just like these pumpkins. <laughs> to the max, hey. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. Yes, and yeah, the pumpkins are real cute too. So they're just happy little beans. So they're content lovely. with being themselves. And I'm just adding some of the, um, the, pencil brush over this to add like little tick marks because that's what I love in my art is a lot of like handmade quality mm -hmm. you kind of learn what makes it feel um like what do you call it like genuine or crafted or like I don't know authentic bespoke uh, yeah bespoke ooh fancy <laughs> ooh. Well, you know things about like fat. Oh, by the way, we haven't talked enough about Kathleen. Go follow Kathleen. She is amazing. It's Kathleen Illustrated on Instagram, right? Yeah, yeah that's right. <laughs> Own it. Uh, but absolutely love your work. And you work in fresco a lot as well and have so much textural and like freeing. It feels just like, like you're having fun. You know, it's that feeling of artists having fun. And I definitely hey. see that in your work. <laughs> Thanks so much. I feel the same way about you, Anna. Aww. I mean, <laughs> most of the time, true. <laughs> yeah, I feel you. And just a heads up, we've got about five minutes left, maybe a little <gasps> bit less. So I think you're making really good time, though. It goes so fast. It's crazy. Right. But um, yeah, I think that we've had a lot of fun with these guys. Obviously, there's so much detail you can put into anything. <laughs> Sky's the limit, basically. And we have tons of room because of that, like the DPI and all that jazz. So I could keep working on these for a, a good long time, but it is up to you when it feels like it's 
finished or whatever finito um but i would suggest just like doing 10 percent less <laughs> usually oh. and then come back to it the next day and see like what do you think what does it feel like it's something is it you know done but personally i love when art feels looser rather than tighter and a little bit more um like the audience has a part of interpreting it rather than it being just like you know this is made of wood or like whatever <laughs> you know it's like a threat <laughs> exactly like you better not say it's metal because it ain't uh, <laughs> it's definitely um that's up to like you as an artist, whether you want it to be super, super detailed or not. I just always think that it's a, a good call to step back and just like discover for yourself what is your limitation of like how much detail versus, you know, less. Right. And I think that's a really good tip about not having to finish something in like one sitting, like come back to it the next day. You don't have to post it on Instagram right away. Just wait, just come back. Absolutely. And if you're checking Instagram for like, you know, ooh, do people like my work or feeling good or bad based on anything? Like if you're feeling great or bad, I just don't want you to feel anything honestly from Instagram. I don't want you to put any of your self-worth into it. So I would say uh, like just keep pieces for yourself unless you feel like you want people to see it and then just let the response go. Just be like, I just wanted to put it out there. That's it. That's mm -hmm. all I did. Um, but I think that, yeah, for your mental well-being, it's important to just make sure that you keep it light. <laughs> Amen to that. That's amazing. Amazing advice for these scary times. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so uh, the uh, pumpkins that we've worked on were just a live demo of the watercolor and oil brushes, but the uh, time lapses showed what I would do for an entirely full piece. Uh, if you want any tips on like, uh, what would you call it, like color or anything like that? I know I get a lot of questions about colors that I use. I would definitely recommend if you're worried about your color harmonies or palettes working together, check out the Adobe Color Tool. It is honestly amazing. Yes. It's so good. And if you are curious about like what um, palettes go together, I love analogous personally, and you could just swivel it all around the wheel and find different analogous color palettes and things like that. Um, but you'll be surprised if you work in other palettes it might be your bag. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> yeah, totally. So you can go to color.adobe.com to do that on the browser or download Capture to make your own color palettes. And it's free and it's amazing. It's free. That's what yes. we love to hear. Cool. So before we totally wrap up, is there anything that you want to shout out before we go? Like your socials, what's going on <laughs> in your life? My socials. Well, follow Kathleen. And then uh, if you have time, you can follow me on uh, Anna Davis Court on basically every social Instagram and Twitter I'm most active on. And then of course, Behance. We live stream here all the time. I live stream with my best friend, Anthony Sims, most times. Hey, Anthony in the chat. Uh, <laughs> so if you had fun in the chat with him today, then definitely check out our stream. Dreams. It's a bundle of fun, a lot of puns. We call it Oops All Bloops because it is very uh, informal. <laughs> and we just have fun and make art. I mean, what more could you ask for? So that's fun. Um, also, ooh, ooh, on November 3rd, uh, I worked on a book called Ellie and Me for the Star Wars universe. It is technically the first uh, book for Galaxy's Edge. That is a picture book for children. And um, that comes out November 3rd. It'll be in Targets. Woo. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I had no idea. Yeah, it was so cool. Yeah, it was amazing to get that project. And I'm so happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, it's just, I'm happy. Cool. <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> well, everybody go follow Anna for more good times. Definitely check out her Behance streams. I'm definitely going to be stopping by more now that I know that oh. you're streaming all the time. That's all awesome. the time. Oh, yeah, we do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 p.m. Pacific to 6 p.m. Pacific, by the way. There you go. So chat, no excuse, go check it out. And then we're going to be back in just a couple minutes with another stream and we'll be finishing out the day later with a stream uh, with myself and Tammy Coker. So that's going to be a good time. Tammy, Say hi to Tammy for me. He's my fellow oh, Adobe Creative Residency person. <laughs> Heck yeah. So chat, thank you so much for being here. Anna, it's been just delightful. Thank you. And thank we'll you, be back Kathleen. soon. Bye everybody. Bye.